Hey ladies and gentlemen, Wolf Cryer here and welcome to a big PTR update. So today, Blizzard released patch notes for patch 2.5 on the PTR. This is live on the PTR, ladies and gentlemen. So the first thing listed in these patch notes is the brand new feature, the Armory. Players may now save up to five different builds per character using the Armory. This new feature can be found in the Town Hub within each act. Saving a build in the Armory will snapshot your character's current gear, all socketed items, active and passive skills, and Kanai's cube powers. Equipping a saved armory build will automatically swap items and gear between the character and the stash. So let's take a look at the armory in the PTR. Here we have the armory with slots for five for each character. And you just click save. I got my burning monk build right here. All the gear, all that stuff. Save. Burning monk. And then I click OK, and there it is. I can look at the details, and everything is there. Boom. Nice and easy. And then I could set up a different one for a Raymond R6 Generator Monk, or another one for an Ulianus Monk, another one for a Support Monk, and another one for an Inner EP Monk. Awesome. This is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the things announced at BlizzCon that I have been looking forward to immensely. All right, so there we have the armory. Next up is crafting mat storage. Starting with patch 2.5, crafting materials picked up or obtained through salvaging will now appear in a separate storage tab freeing up space in the shared stash. This tab can be accessed through the inventory window. So let's take a look at that. Access your crafting materials. You press this button, there are your bounty mats, your crafting mats, and your hellfire mats. That is another thing that was introduced at BlizzCon 2016 that was definitely something I was looking forward to. No more wasted space in your stash tabs. Now everything is right here. You can see I have 11,733 arcane dust that no longer has to take up any space in my bags. That is amazing. All right, next up on the PTR patch notes, Crusaders Shield Glare. The Divine Verdict Rune has been updated to apply its secondary effect even if the target is immune to crowd control effects. This means that Divine Verdict can now be used on Juggernaut mobs, which is awesome for Crusaders. Next up, another wicked interesting thing in my opinion are Primal Ancient Items. Legendary and Set Items will now have a chance to roll as a Primal Ancient, and these items are more rare than ancient items and have increased stat ranges. There is a lot of complaining about this on the PTR and in general on the forums, but I think this is pretty cool. It brings back a Diablo 2 type of aspect where, you know what? Everything's not handed to you. So now it takes an even greater amount of RNG to get primal ancient items. I actually look forward to this. Maybe I'll get some flaming in this video. Maybe I'll care tomorrow because I like this. It brings back that D2 feel of, oh my God, I just got a primal ancient item. That's what Diablo is meant to be. For you guys who think this is a bad thing, whatever. I like it. I like it a lot because it gives more of a, oh my God, oh my God, primal ancient. I mean, that's pretty cool when you can yell that in clan chat or on Skype or TeamSpeak or Discord. That's going to be awesome. Next up, now probably nobody except me is pretty excited about this, but back in Season 5 or 6, I created a build known as a Rhymeheart Generator build. And it was an LON build that utilized the Rhymeheart and Tsunami on the Monk and created a Rhymeheart generator build 
that utilize the proc from the Reimhardt to deal a massive amount of cool damage, but it definitely didn't proc much with the 10% proc rate, and now that proc rate is increased to 20%. That is similar to Mantled Heal type stuff going on, but with Reimhardt. I mean, a Tsunami Generator, LON Generator, is now something that might be viable. I mean, I was able to push a 72 or a 73 with my base one back in Season 5 or 6. This could actually make it useful or another build. Who knows? I'll have to fiddle around and see what I can come up with. Maybe you guys can come up with something. But the 10 to 20% is a huge damage increase for Reimhardt. It is, however, one of the hardest items in the game to get, which is also pretty cool. It took me quite a while to get my first one, so we'll have to wait and see. But this definitely looks like it could lead to some very cool and interesting builds. We'll have to wait and see, though, ladies and gentlemen. All right, next up, the Barber. This weapon is now a ceremonial knife instead of a dagger, allowing it to roll the same damage as other Witch Doctor items. The damage bonus to the final explosion of this item's legendary power has also been reintroduced. Like nobody saw that coming. It definitely needed to go back once they fixed all the bugs. So now, Spirit Barrage might end up being a thing. That would be wicked cool. So let's hope some good testing goes on and they can see what this can do because... That's pretty cool update as well, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, we have Strong Arm Bracers. The damage bonus from this item is now applied when the knockback occurs rather than when the enemy lands. The damage bonus duration has been increased to 6 seconds, so now it's more time up for that damage bonus, and it starts immediately once the Monk Cyclone strikes or a Barb pulls. Next up, Mantled Heal. Wizard pets, such as Hydras, will now also proc the damage component of Mantled Heal when attacking a target. This change will occur on an upcoming PTR patch. But ladies and gentlemen, this might bring back Hydra builds to the Wizard for GR pushing. That would be absolutely amazing. Another thing that I am looking forward to seeing what people can do with this. Guys, so far, this patch is pretty damn cool, in my opinion. Alright, some other things. The requirement for participating in certain difficulty levels in pub games has been changed from the current Paragon level to highest solo GR clear, which is pretty cool. You won't get that person in your bounties where you're trying to run T10 bounties, and yet they can't even do a T4 greater rift so that is pretty cool speaking of bounties ladies and gentlemen the bonus acts have been removed in this patch with this change completing five bounties in any act will now grant you a large herodric chest containing the same contents as both the herodric and bonus caches combined ladies and gentlemen no more bonus acts. You can turn in any act you want so that noob who accidentally clicks, or, or me, when I accidentally click the wrong bounty, you're still going to get all the mats, ladies and gentlemen, which is another good thing. This patch is chock full of awesome stuff. And last but not least, set dungeons. It looks like for the Unhallowed Essence, Armor of Arcan, and Delceray's Magnum Opus, those have been made slightly easier, which is pretty cool because those ones were some that people had problems with. So all three of those set dungeons have been adjusted to make them easier. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have my patch notes for patch 2.5, which is now live on the PTR. The only thing that's not live yet is the Hydra proccing, the Mantled Heal, but everything else is is up and on the PTR. Thank you guys very much for checking out this video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments both what you think of this video and what you think of this upcoming patch. It's a pretty decent sized patch with some very 
very cool additions to the game, in my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks once again, and you guys have a great night. Peace.